basal stock nitrate test is one tool that you can use to look at whether or not you were deficient in nitrogen within a given growing season. With this particular test, after it's collected from the field, as with any other nitrate test, one of the things you want to do is to try to handle the sample to maintain the amount of nitrate within the sample so you don't see any losses that can occur after the sample is taken. When you take the sample, what's important is we want to try to dry the sample as quickly as possible. And one thing you can try to do to help in, in, with the drying of the sample is split the stalks as they're being taken within the field with a utility knife. This will help and aid in quick, quickly drying the sample and trying to maintain or reduce the amount of nitrate lost from that sample after collection. When you collect the sample, make sure that it's in a paper bag before it goes to the lab because plastic bags tend to retain moisture as samples are being dried and can, and can compromise the, the sample itself prior to that sample being analyzed. One of the major questions that we get with the basal stock nitrate test is how do we interpret the results? There are four categories when it comes to interpreting the results. One of the things that you're going to notice on your report is that the results are in parts per million. This is a concentration value. Like other soil tests, the basal stock nitrate test is a concentration that's meant to be an index of, of particular availability of the nitrogen within that field. So the ranges you want to remember are 0 to 250 part per million. This is the range of deficiency. This is a situation where if our test results are in that classification, the nitrogen was likely short in that field. 200 to 50 to 700 part per million, uh, this is what we consider our marginal class where nitrogen was likely deficient. 700 to 2,000 part per million, this is our target point. So if we're in that particular range, um, we're likely at the optimal nitrogen rate within that given field. And above 2,000 part per million is what we consider to be our excessive category. And this is a situation where nitrogen was likely oversupplied to the crop within that given year. One thing about the basal stock nitrate test is that it's really meant to be a long-term approach to looking at your nitrogen management. So one of the things you're going to want to do is to get multiple tests within the same area of the field so you know you have comparable results over time. And when we're starting to look at the test with the interpretations, if we're consistently in the excessive category, it's one of the considerations you may want to make is to start looking at whether or not you can reduce your nitrogen rates because you're likely going to be consistently over years oversupplying nitrogen within that given area of the field. So it's very important to start to take this data, take a number of years worth of data, and sit down with whoever is making the decision of your nitrogen management program within your given field, whether it's yourself or an advisor, to try to decide what to do long term. And then look at reevaluating over time what your values are if you want to continue using this test to see where you're coming at after some of these changes are made.